You are listening to I Hate Average Podcast featuring Jay from the Bronx. Alright, I'm back. I Hate Average Podcast. I'm excited. Another week, another great guest. Last week was a lot of fun. We had Isabel from the Real Women Real Talk Podcast. She uh, shared inter- interesting insight from her story, what got her started in podcasting. And some, she shared some of the stories that she went through in life and dating, online dating, and some of the stories that her guests and friends have told her. So it was a lot of fun, a little longer than our usual uh, episodes, but I think I like that, that long form style. So it was a lot of fun. Thank you again, Isabel. Before I get into this new, this new episode with Remo Morak, I want to send my condolences to the family of Prodigy of Mob Deep. Um, I don't know why his, his death bothered me more than um, it should. Uh, I wasn't like a big, big Mob Deep fan or a big Prodigy fan, but just I guess because like that's kind of like my era, that style, you know, 99, 2000, that's when, you know, I became a fan of hip hop and hearing their music, you know, it just reminds me of a time it's not that i was like the biggest biggest fan but i guess their music reminds me of a time so i guess you know feeling a little nostalgic uh in his death but definitely want to send my condolences to his family um and uh rest in peace man it's it's tough this life um from what i'm hearing that he died from natural causes um of course you're gonna have your conspiracy theories and some people saying it was foul play but I want to stay positive. I want to believe that it was natural causes. He had a uh, uh, a pre-existing illness, and um, that's what they're saying they believe was the cause of his death. But definitely want to send condolences to his family and uh, to Havoc, man. I, these guys grew up together. I know it's not easy at all for him to lose a friend for 20, 30 years. But anyway, um, I want to shift to be more positive. Um, so this week we have Remo Marac. He is a media personality, uh, just a ball of energy. If you hear his story, hear the things that he's working on, it just inspires you, makes you want to get to work. I enjoy talking to this brother, just you know, hearing what inspires him and, and, and hearing the things, the projects that he's working on. He's just he's wearing so many hats, but it's a lot of fun, and he's having fun doing it. He doesn't sound tired. He doesn't sound, uh, you know, overwhelmed. He just sounds excited about life and excited about what he's doing. So it was contagious to talk to him. It was a lot of fun. And, you know, a little fire in me made me want to go harder. And um, I think you guys are going to enjoy this. So here's my interview with me, Remo Marak. All right, everyone. I have here Remo Marak. Um... I'm excited to have him. You guys probably seen him on YouTube. Uh, of course, he's all over Instagram, doing a lot of content creation. Remo, thanks for being on the show. Hey, what's going on, man? How you doing, man? Yeah, I appreciate you. Uh, definitely having me. This is, I, I'm not going to lie. You're the actual first uh, on-phone uh, interview I've had in my uh, career thus far. That's that's including that's including before, before the media um, with acting and modeling. So this is like the first... Uh, on phone interview so i'm real stoked and and geeked and psyched about this okay okay well thank you for being on the show um you you're a busy guy man i see you, I, I i follow your youtube page and you're constantly everywhere all all the different events all the uh the talent shows the basketball games so what, what got you started with, with um videography oh all right so pretty much um yeah, I'm glad you asked that because a lot of people, they they in this industry they confuse me as a rapper, as, but I understand why because I guess my presence it looks like I rap. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So one would think, okay, yeah, he raps, he spits bars, and that's not the case. Uh, yeah. Don't ask me to do a feature because you'll have the biggest wood mixtape, wood <laughs> album, <laughs> Lego, everything. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. It, yeah, it'd be it'd be it'd be a dub. So you know, but now, nah, but nonetheless, man, um. Uh, I gotta take it back. Uh, let's see. Uh, this was around the time I want to say 2007. Okay. Uh, uh, this is when those flip uh, cameras 
were were popular. I don't know if you remember those. Yeah, I remember. I think yeah. I, had, I had a Boost one. I had a. <laughs> All right, right, right. So Boost had their version. I had the original, original flip. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So my mom, oh, shouts out to her. Um, she was giving it to me to help me with my acting and modeling when I when I was starting. So, you know, she you know she was like, oh, videotape yourself. You know, whenever you do you you got auditions and stuff, it, it worked. You know, I mean, you know, I I would you know do what I'd say what I say I'd talk in monotone I'd talk in like loud tones into it. So then I think it was one time uh, I was with my peoples in Harlem. Like shout out to the Fat Mob and shit. Okay. You know and um, yeah, sorry if I'm cursing tonight. No, nah, no, nah, that's fine. It's fine. Right, cool, 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 cool. You know, um, we uh, I just videotaped them. Like I think the videotape that f- I first started. Out with Ream TV, I dead said the whole Ream TV line. I was like, "Yo, I was mad cocky with you know how it is." Oh, Ream, <laughs> cocky. Yeah, Ream TV, get serious TV. Yeah. And my boys, you know, they be like, "Oh, whatever, Ream, get out of here with your camera phone." But then they started catching wind. So now, like catching the hood, or like catch, like catching wind. They're like, "Yo, something's Ream TV about or whatever." So you know, mm-hmm. I dead would like pull it out. I definitely I would have it on me, and I would pull it out and dead videotape people. Like yeah. of us, of our antics in the club, antics, you know, just antics. Period. It was, it was, it was my, the original thing was to be like a black version of um, Jackass. Oh, that, that was, was smart. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. So that's what it was. I mean, even though we didn't do like Jackass like that, but it was a a black version of it. So it's like, all right, to let people know, all right, this is what we do, and you know, it was dope. So then the major major thing I did on it. It was, I think it was around like the first season, the second season of it. I had see, I had mad seasons, so it was like the uh, second season as well. I stepped it up and I filmed our cookout. Okay. We, we, we have a, we used to have an annual cookout or whatever. You know what I'm saying? We filmed that, so that kind of started picking up a little buzz and views. And people, if if they see me in the street or if they see me at the cookout, they're like, "Oh, we got that Ream TV. What up?" But I'm like, <laughs> "I'm like, nah, I really don't got it today." Oh, come on, dude, you want to know? You know what I'm saying? But um. You know what I'm saying? So I, I just said, I just put two and two together about the third season. I was like, all right, you know what? I'm going to start really doing some stuff. I'm going to start traveling. So then that's um the next thing that got me a buzz on YouTube, as well as I started getting paid on YouTube because back then with YouTube, wow, that sounds very prehistoric. But um, <laughs> <laughs> um you you it, it only took you about, I think it was like a um a thousand views or it took you like 1500 views and you, and you would start, they would start monetizing them and start paying you. Okay. For your views. So yeah. what I put up was when I was at Dykeman, now this was back in 2011 where, um, when, um, Brandon Jennings and, um, was going against too hard to go. I don't know if you remember that. Oh, um, they, they were both talking trash to each other on Twitter. So when he came to the game, so I was videotaping the game. So right. it was hype. It was lit. And, and still to this day, I think I'm at, uh, I think I'm at like 2,700, 2,800 wow. views. Yeah, because that, that, that was a big game. That was a big game. Yeah, yeah, right. But the thing was, I just put two and two together. I was like, yo, if this could happen in, of me just like filming a game, oh, the hell with that. I'm going, I'm going further with this. I'm going to start, <laughs> I'm going to start being more scripted in the fourth season. So then fourth season came along, and I was thinking, I was like, right, I want to get on a, somebody's camera. Or, you know, at the time, I didn't really have a job to buy my own camera yeah. to do the filming. So I was like, all right, what's the worst? Cause I'll, I'll use some of my tax money and some of uh, my um, unemployment money to fund eight, eight episodes to be yeah. filmed. But you know how it is in this era. People was coming with the janky business. Yo, give me three racks. So I'm like, three racks? <laughs> I'm like three rap for what? I'm like you're not even. And you know it was dudes that were doing stuff with like Jim Jones and yeah. stuff. You know what I'm saying? So that's when the Hummer Sutton. Everybody thinks Hummer Sutton now was something big. It, it was even big back then. Oh, you know what I'm course, saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you know I'm like dude, whatever. I was you know what the hell with you? So I took a, a break from it. I'm not gonna lie, and I just continued on my acting and modeling. Yeah, you started doing stuff. for yourself instead of. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was like the hell with this. I'll just continue with that. So. Rain TV had paused for a minute. So now I'll bring it forward. I, I went into department of education. I started teaching and stuff like that. Okay. Um, then I want to say about 2013-ish, I started doing a couple here and there, like guest appearances on other people's shows. And then my homegirl, um, 
shouts out to them. They're the ones that kind of got me started my media career in regards with podcast, radio, and stuff like that. They would have me on as a special guest. So then, you know, I just caught the bug. And um, I started my career in, in uh, radio at uh, the Matrix Studios in the Bronx. Yeah. Shouts to DSN. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I had, uh, had a great talk with the owner, DWI. Shouts out to him. We had like an hour conversation. Um, and I want to say from, uh, I want to say about from September, 2014 to about December, 2014, I just did straight research of my, my idols in media. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So that's like Fat Five Freddy, Sway Calloway, Angie Martinez, uh, uh, uh Ralph McDaniel, Cool DJ Red Alert, uh, Tori, Tori Star, Tareen, uh, okay. Michael Basin, um, Karen Hunter, when she started a little bit, you know, I, I was kind of taking a little bit of tidbits from her. Um, so you're uh, building a blueprint for yourself. Right, right. So pretty much, um, so uh, I want to say January 2015 is where the media career for me kind of started because I started, uh, I was one of the few at the network that would sit down at everybody's show and take notes. So I, I just wrote down, that everybody would look at me weird. You know, they were looking at me like a weird kid. Like, yo, who the hell is this? Who's taking notes? What are you doing? Why are you taking notes? You know, but one the one dude that respected it was um DJ Swerve. Shouts out to him because he originally told me to do that, but I was already on that anyway. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, shouts out to him. He respected it. You know, still to this day, we still talk. I'm so cool with him. Um, And I'll still say he's one of the, the pioneers that at DSN that, you know, uh, catered to my career and um, crafted it to what it to where it is now, like the work ethic, and always told everybody, you know, about my work ethic, you know, and I really respect him for that, you know, wholeheartedly. You know, I'll, I'll definitely have to say he was one of the staples that you know pushed my career as fast as what it where it is now. Yeah. Um, you know, so then you know one thing, uh, you know, one thing led to another. The juices started flowing. You know, I'm I'm hype. I'm I'm ready. I'm I'm promoting this shit like crazy, and I'm having a podcast show. People are, a couple of people are shocked about it. They're like, "Oh, word! You getting a podcast? You on the air? Yeah, this is you. You know what I'm saying? Like all that <laughs> is happening, you know." And they didn't, uh, they didn't know about your past uh, doing Remo TV. Yeah, they knew about it, but they didn't think I would take it to a level of, "All right, I'm gonna go on the airwaves. I'm gonna go on radio." Yeah, you know what I'm saying? They knew I could do it, but they didn't think I was really gonna do it. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> Yeah, you know what I mean. So now, um, it's March. It's March twelfth, two thousand fifteen. That's when I started. I know. I still know the date to this day. And the greatest but horrible thing happened to me. And which was, I was late for my very first show. Oh man! I and, was, it, and it was your show. You was the host. Yeah. Wow. I was late. I was tremendously late. And my first guests were the ones that put me on to radio on oh, their show. Man. Right. So I'm not going to lie. I, I mean, you heard the disgust in my face. Like, I was pissed <laughs> off at MTA. I was pissed off at the cabs. You heard it in my voice. And, and from there on is where the meticulous, hardworking, never stop desire, hunger, motivation, passion. Uh, phew, there's, there's a plethora of words I could add on to that yeah. of my career like came to fold like off that one episode you know what I'm saying yeah. and I go I, I go to say that because I try to tell people all the time about my story I want people to understand it it's this thing is no joke this isn't no um, you just come on on Instagram or you come on social media and you just do it you know what I'm saying? It, it doesn't work that way. It, there's many levels to this. There's many variables. There's many instances. There's many time. It, it's so much to put into this, into your career. You know what I'm saying? And for me, you know, the 10 years of it, of what I did combined, plus with the media, I mean, you want, you don't understand. Like, if anybody would understand, if they're listening to this telecast or whatever, you know, or this podcast, whatever that, I have, there's times I lost sleep. There's times of, there's times I've lost. Uh, I want to say me- not mental prowess. Uh, I mm. there'll be times I'll be mentally drained. 
Yeah, the stress and, and figuring yeah. out things. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because it's like, damn, I'm doing everything. Why am I not hitting? Why am I not touching? Yeah. But I, but in the same token, I am touching. It's just the numbers wise. Because see, in this era, everybody's so hard pressed on numbers, but they don't realize the numbers matter when you get to the big table and the contracts. Yeah, of course. It doesn't matter. Okay, if you have two thousand only on Instagram. But you still have a following outside of Instagram. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, of course. Like you actually have, like you could touch the people, you, right? You know, like, yeah, yeah. Nah, right. You know what I'm saying? And what's shocking about me, and I laugh about this all the time. Um, it's it's the it's the case of okay, somebody looks at my Instagram, they say okay, he only has 2,400, right? Yeah. Because I have three. I have, I have like four Instagrams. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> oh wow. Right? Yeah. Yep. Right. But each one serves its its own purpose. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? But one of them I have like twenty four hundred. Now one if a if an artist or whatever comes up, right? They talk, they always they always do it. They, it always happens all the time. Yo, what's up? I need to come on the show. You know, they'll hit me up or whatever, whatever, whatever. I'll tell them uh, send me a bio. They'll yeah. they'll hit me back with the why I gotta send a bio. Like you not that elite like that. Wow. I'm like, okay. No, nah, yeah, I get that. Oh no, oh, oh, oh. I, we gonna get to that in this interview. You know, trust me, we won't get into that. If we have time for it, we definitely gonna get into that. Trust yeah. me, brother. You might, you might as well put an asterisk and put exclusive. <laughs> definitely on, put on, <laughs> on, on this shit because we we gonna get we gonna get to a lot of things. Okay, but um, nonetheless, um, yeah, you know, and I, and they were front on me, hot, yo, whatever, you know, you're not that serious, you're not that elite. So I I I know what I do. You know what I'm saying? Of and that's course. the one thing I think that separates me from a lot of people in the industry, in the industry, as far as the independent industry. Yeah, you could say maybe mainstream too to a degree. I mean, yeah. I, however you want to measure that. But the one thing is with me, I know my work. Yeah, you know, you know, the, you know the work that you put in. You know the time you put yeah. in. Yeah, this isn't this isn't no operating like as if I'm just some whim operation. No, this is like real deal, holy field stuff. You know what of I'm course. saying? Yeah. Of so, um, going into it, um, you know, I laugh at it. So you know, a lot of times. The events you see where I'm at, you know what I'm saying? These 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 and these entertainers that are struggling to get in, they're struggling to get in. Meanwhile, I skipped the whole line. Yeah. And they're not calling me by my stage name. They're calling me by my government. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I walk right in, I'm in VIP, I'm s- sipping on bottles, chilling. Oh, sometimes it gets sent to me for free. And then dudes is coming up to me like, yo, what's going on here? I'm like, dude. I'm 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 the real deal. I, I really do this. <laughs> yeah, it isn't yeah, they ain't no they ain't no they ain't no, you know, gluing sticks and all that other nonsense. You know what I'm saying? This is what I really do and there's entertainers if you see on my page, I don't know if you have seen it, yeah. that I know them. Like, you know what I'm saying? I've I've made the connections to know them. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? It's not so just it, a photo op, it is it's yeah. a real connection, yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And I really have like anywhere from like five to maybe an hour conversation with these people. Yeah. And and even though and even also too every now and then I'll still hit them either through the gram on DM or in a text if they still have the same number or whatever the case may be or I will still hit up their PR or whomever within their team. Yeah. To keep the connection strong, you know what I'm saying? And 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 not for nothing there's, there's people that respect me, man. You of know course, what I'm saying? Of like course. You know I mean, what I'm saying? I, def- I do. I, I. That's why I wanted to 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 build with you because I respect your grind. Like you constantly, constantly putting out stuff, and I like I. I want. I. You know, I kind of. I'm trying to get into the industry myself, but you know, I I run out of ideas. Like, well, what can I post today? But like you, you, every day you posted up something. You, you constantly. Oh, yeah. So I got. I always got to respect that. Yeah, definitely, man. And I appreciate that. You know what I mean? I, I'll tell you, and I'll tell you the secret. It's it's guys like you that are keeping me motivated because because you have to understand, man. And shout out to Sandy Law. Um, he's a big. I don't know if you know Sandy Law. He's big time celebrity manager of, of major celebrities. Okay. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't. He does. I think he does um, attorney stuff as well, legal stuff as well. And he's a big time entrepreneur. And there was one video he put up on New Year's Eve, which was this this New Year's, the 2017. Okay. And he was like, yo, just because you had a great 2016 don't mean you don't stop in 2017. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's and, true. It's true. And he said, and, he, and in the video, he also said, he said, yo, you watch out 
this dude's out there. Like, you know what I'm saying? And that's what's on my mind. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to lie. There's other podcasts. That, and, and I watch the other podcasts. And I'm looking. And I'm like, oh, shit. Like, yeah. they're going to they're you, gonna come at my head. It's true. Like, you know if what you start like, slacking oh. it, it's like if you yeah. start slacking it. Yeah, yeah, nah, man. Yeah, they're going to be here. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, they're going to come in my head. They're going to take me out the effing game. You know what I'm saying? And and for me, I um there was a point in time I took a hiatus off, but it was only because I was overwhelmed because it was so much shit I was involved with. Yeah. I, uh, the podcast, uh, possible TV show was going to happen, plus hosting multiple events, plus um the web series that I'm that that we're about to drop in uh, fall of this year. Okay. We were filming that. You know what I'm saying? It was just so much for me that I, I didn't do enough with branding. Of course, yeah. So I probably did. People say I took a big risk, but it was a hefty reward after that. And I took I took about the biggest probably layoff that I ever did in my career. I took a four to five-month layoff. Wow. But in that, I was but, still working. Exactly, yeah, see, yeah. See, that's the difference. He was actually... You, you you was creating content instead of branding yourself. You was creating it and, and, and working on other right. things. Yeah, right. And I was branding. You know, I was and it, like you said, you hit it, you hit it right off the nose the first time. Yeah, I was branding. I was branding my ass off. So there would be um places like events I pull up to, and people would know, but they would have to question it. Like, wait, wait, ain't you Remo Morant? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yo, like like wait a minute. So you're not doing radio? Like, why'd you stop? And I told, and I, and then once I told them, they're like, "Oh wow, so you really about to do something major?" I'm like, "Yeah." I mean, I had, I knew I was gonna come back. Yeah. But I didn't know how fast. So I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, uh, speak on that. So the first thing I did was get a manager. So shout out to um, JD Hunter because what I did during the hiatus, I was really studying about everybody else. I was studying the, the freshers. I was studying the young MAs. You know what I'm saying? I was yeah. studying. Other people in the independent industry, like what was getting them sparked up? And I said to it's, the next level. Yeah. yeah, I said it's the team, and I didn't have that. Yeah, I had me at at the time. I had a coordinator. Shout out Zakia, um, Zakia Griffin. She was my coordinator for my radio show, who elevated, helped me elevate my show because it was her and I. Yeah. So we were a mini team, but now I, it's not what I have now. Now I have a squad. I have <laughs> a manager. I have a PR. I have a camera crew. I have a producer. I have two coordinators. The producer is a coordinator as well because she's connected to the mid, uh, mid-level mid A-listers and celebrities. Okay. And then my uh, Ke- Zakia is my coordinator for the independent talent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it still keeps me in the loop. Of course, you get what I'm saying. So you're so, still able to still able to go to the events and still you know keep right. your name out there, right? And even now, I don't have to be there physically because your brand is there. Yeah, yeah, right. You know what I mean. So that's why I built it up to. It. So yeah. now, um, yeah. So now, uh, I'll bring up the speed after the hiatus. So I go to a celebrity um charity game, uh. It was uh, Freshers People. Um, shout outs to the uh, Reality Check Radio. They sponsored it. Now, mind you, I pulls up mm. and I'm just chilling. You know, I'm not even. So I start videotaping myself, you know, selfie video. Ha ha, I'm here. Yeah. You know, in the cut. So this camera girl, she asked me, like, hey, you, what's going on? Like, what do you do? So I gave him my business card. So that's another thing, too. I'm going to speak about that, too, as well. That's what kept yeah. me in the loop as well, too. I gave my business card. She read it. She's like, yo, you serious? I'm like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm a media personality. I do, I did radio. I had a, she's like, wow. So she introduces me to uh, one of uh, one of the people I used to do calls radio with, with Yana G. Wow. Um, she's of, she used to be at DTF. She had her own, she has her own uh, brand as well called Rich Off Life TV. I don't know if you heard of it. Okay. Um, She also writes, and blogs and uh, what's good magazine. Um, so you know what I mean. She, you know, we talked. 
And, you know, I told her, I said, look, I'll give you my media bio, EPK, which at that time was like a damn constitution. It explained about <laughs> everything, everything <laughs> in my career. Yeah. Thank God. Shout out to uh, Christina Wu for shortening and compressing my uh, EPK, like the one that you got now. Yeah. That I, that I sent to you. Yeah. So yeah. she compressed it to that. Thank God. Because my thing, from what people tell me, was like yes. pages. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was it was like it was probably be probably like bestseller you know on on uh Barnes and Nobles or whatever. But um nonetheless, you know, um she read it, she was with she was with it, and I got back in radio in October. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I'm co hosting on her show, you know, I'm letting everybody know about the brand is Remo Rack. Yeah, and, and you know, and I'm doing my sports analyst. I'm being funny, you know. I'm, you know, I'm not trying to take over. I'm just being funny. I'm doing what I do, and um, he was doing it for a little bit. I'm not gonna yeah. lie, he was doing it for a few months, and um, not gonna lie, during that process, I put I put an application in for a TV show over at um Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Shout out to them. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Um. They shocked the hell out of me because two months after that, they they gave me my own TV show. Wow, they gave the okay. Wow. Yeah, they gave me okay. I had the schedule. I was losing my mind. I said, "Holy shit!" <laughs> I, I had I got that letter like in early December, and they had my first show to air on Christmas Eve. Wow. Yeah, so I had to like I was scrambling. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, damn, who the fuck can I get? And I hit up Bo. Shout out to Bo. And yeah. uh, you know, much respect to our bond and and what we're working on and stuff like that. Um, Bo was with it. Bo was like, "Word, TV show, and we've been a network network." I'm like, "Yeah, I mean, it, even though it's public access, but yeah, yeah. we had a network." And you know, I mean, public access it, it, it's still touching hundreds right. of thousands of people. It's the right, yeah. right. But I just have to break that down because that's unfortunately the era we are in. So. Yeah. You know, people, you know, they, they get warped with thinking, oh, if it's not face, Facebook Live, it's not IG Live, it's not fucking, um, it's not, you know, uh, mainstream uh, media, it's not what it is. I'm like, you fucking fools, you're idiots. It's like, yeah. whatever. You know what I'm saying? So now, hey, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah, you're a jabroni, whatever. All right. You know, so um, now on to this first season of my show, TV show. Man, it was we we went we went some ups and downs because we were both we're still learning, and I started building my team, and um, you know, it it, it was it was it was a hard first season, yeah, of my TV show. Now second season, which we're still in now. I mean, even though uh, this Saturday is the last uh, episode of season two. Okay, you know what I'm so saying. You're a little bit more prepared this season. Yeah, 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 we were, we were, we were, we were a little bit prepared. Uh, we we're kind of understanding the deadlines because then I took over the editing role. Because okay. um, unfortunately, me and the editor from the first season we had our little differences. But then, uh, Bo helped me understand what was the what was the indifference. So you know, I'm not a type. I never say never to people. Of course, yeah. But nonetheless, um, the second season I learned a lot and I started really get more of the flow of the juices of production. Okay. Because I, I started helping in now. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I always felt I always felt that way. I was like, all right, look, dude, I'm not gonna be handicapped with my brand. Cause God forbid if my cameraman can't do it, who's gonna do it? I'm not gonna wait for episode, you know, whatever. So then I just jumped in, learned the editing, learned the premiere, Adobe Premiere to edit. Yeah. And I've been getting great views, reviews, you know. Yeah, it and just, it also too. Yeah, okay. it was, nah, it's, it's it goes to show, you know. Again, it's showing your hustle. You just, you know, the opportunity comes, and you just taking advantage of it. Yeah, definitely, man. I mean, I, 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 my one thing I, I like to tell people that are up and coming into this is don't put your, don't cap yourself somewhere where you could expand. I know that it sounds a lot to, but it, it, to break it down. I mean, if you have the ability, if you're with a team, you have the ability to jump in and do the necessaries you have to to maintain things and make it easier for your team, then do so. Yeah. B because 
Why sit back and go, okay, well, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it because I didn't have this and that. No, I'm at, I'm at a network where they don't charge me that much to take the classes yeah. to learn the stuff. I'm going to take it. So, so far it's been amazing. You know, I'm, I'm even in field production class now. I take my final uh, tomorrow wow. on Friday. So I'm now learning. I know how to get the angles, the shots, you know, on a Sony XRX five. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So now it's like even I'm even more of a potent weapon now <laughs> because I can film my own shit. Yeah. So season three is going to be crazy. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We can talk about it. Yeah, we can get into season three. I, I'll I'll let you know right now just the fact that I got Matt Hoffa and uh, Leah Gavinci. Okay. As as my guest. Yeah, Matt Hoffa. <laughs> yeah. If, I don't know if you saw the Matt Hoffa video. Yeah. Uh, when he, when he was spitting. Like we videotaped them spitting while into my um Snapchat uh when I was filming. Yeah. Yeah. So we my cameraman, I got another cameraman on my squad, young guy, yo, shouts out to call me just call me Bills. That's his Instagram. Okay. Shouts out to him. He's he's with it. He's with the shits. And this season three is gonna be something, man. You know, and it also too, you know, the fact that I'm getting I'm an award nominee for the hip hop film festival. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And I've only had this show for six months. Yeah. I've only had the TV show for six months. That's, you know what I'm saying? That's amazing. Man. Congrats on yeah. that. Congrats on yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? Like it just goes to show you, you know, the hard work you pay off, you'll get rewarded. son. Yeah. You know what I mean? It just, it's, I, I'm, I, it hasn't hit me, hit me yet. Yeah, as it should, but I know when that time comes in August with that festival in New York, in Harlem, New York, which is in my hometown. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like the birth, t- it's so crazy how my life is in 360. Like, I was born in Harlem, you know, what I mean, in East Harlem, I was born in, and now I'm in a festival that's in Harlem. Yeah, so it's- you know what I'm saying? So it's like, even though, even though, don't get me wrong, even though my heart. Is Laurelton Queens, but I'm still my current, you know, residence right now is home. Yeah. And the fact that it's here in my hometown, <laughs> like it's just crazy. It, it, like, just, it just feels right to you. It feels right. Like, yeah, like, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Like I'm. That's why I think I'm not trying to like seep in so much because I know me. Like once I realize and connect the dots, I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. I I'm, I might go above and beyond. You know what I'm what I am now. You know yeah. what I'm saying. So, so what do you say? Like, we we you touched on it, but you didn't really go into depth about like like people who try to like downplay your success. Like, yeah, you did this, but it's not this. Like, what 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 do you what do you think about that? Like, what do you say to that? I I laugh at it. I mean, that's my best way to say about it because if you spend your energy trying to prove to somebody what your brand is, you're taking away time from what your brand should be. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So. I laugh at it. I mean, listen, if I'm able to skip the line on VIP and you got to stay somewhere and I'm ahead of you, but yet your numbers or whatever is supposed to be way better than mine, something's wrong. It's true. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If I'm if I'm supposed to be this person that's subpar to you, but yet I'm skipping on lines, I'm I'm talking to the power players. I'm, you know, yeah. I'm 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 in the room and it's damn oh shit, it's Remo. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> something got to be wrong. It's true. It's true. You know what I'm saying? Something got to be wrong. Cause it, just because uh, a lot of people follow you on Instagram don't mean that they really support you. Right. So it's different when you have like support in person or like, you know, people who sell things, they actually get the sales. But just because you got 20,000 people following you, they don't all support you. Right. Yeah. See, and that's the difference. See, and that's the difference with me. Like my supporters, I really know. Yeah, like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I really know them. Yeah. Like there's some that know me from basketball. They be like, "Yo, like Remo played basketball. Yeah. Like Remo was a baller. Remo, Remo, if he didn't get into college, probably had an opportunity to go play overseas. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like certain, you know, certain you know, like just people that know me, they'll tell you my story. Yeah, that that's the difference. I think that I, that that's what separates me a lot from a, a lot of people. Yeah, you, you know, know what I'm you saying? You don't gotta fake it for you don't gotta fake it for uh, social media. Yeah, nah, I don't. Everything you see on social media, that's really what it is. Yeah. And 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 on an events tip, I don't go to every event. It looks like I do. 
<laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I'll, I'll let the secret out. It looks like I do. It's just what I post up are the ones that benefit my brand. Yeah, it makes sense. That's what it is. I trust me. I trust me. I've I'm only shown y'all a quarter of what what, what what's been done. Yeah. And my quarter looks like a million dollars. <laughs> you get yeah, you get what I'm saying? Like yeah. you know, you don't make this up. You know what I'm saying? You don't make this up. And even and even when you got a manager like mine, like um J, uh, JD Hunter, Jason Duvall Hunter, shouts out to him, you know what I'm saying? It makes it even more potent because Jason shuts everything down. Yeah. Like the bullshit that come my way, I'm telling him to go to my manager, I don't hit him no more. You know what? I'm happy with that. <laughs> It's, that's yeah, fine. It's that's fine for me. He, he's the filter now. He's the filter. Yeah, I don't listen beforehand. That's the reason why I was getting overwhelmed because people come to me with the nonsense, and I, it was so much for my brain to to um, process that I was just like, "Yo, um, all right, I need a manager to filter this, so I need a a PA, a personal assistant, or whoever." Yeah. So I got I can make the better moves, and it's worked out. <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna lie, it's worked out, man. You know, and granted, um, I was close to the big contracts. Yeah. But I feel it. it it's now. It. 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 It's the barrier is starting to be broken down. Okay. You feel it? You're, you're more ready now. You might not yeah. have been as ready before. Right. And and I didn't have a bigger package. That's the thing. See, you. See, that's a lot of things cats don't understand. In order for you to get the big contracts. You have to have the most supreme package, and that's not just if you're a rapper, if you're a media personality like you and I, if you're a blogger, if you whatever. Like you have to have a serious package. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, you know, it, it, if you're doing charity work, um, what are you doing outside of your brand? Uh, who else have you influenced? You know, it's so much that goes yeah. into it. Who's your team? You know what I'm saying? It's so much that goes into it that people just be losing losing focus on it yeah. and don't be realizing you know and, and 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 i think that's what has been majorly key for me yeah Definitely. and also and also too the fact that my day career funds my media career you know because i teach yeah uh, and you know, plus you know being exposed to children so you kind of you know you're getting a feel for what your fan base could be also because you know oh yeah right Right, yeah. you know, even though, yeah, my, my, I mean, my boys, they're like third and fourth graders. They're not, yeah. I mean, even though I showed them my work, so that's what made the our bond even bigger. Yeah. And now, like, oh my god! So now it's just every day I come in, or every weekend if we if we come in from the weekend. Hey, Mr. Remo. My, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. They don't call me Mr. Remo. They call me my last name. My last name is Tyson. Okay. So, yeah, I, I, I got. I'm the more authoritative figure type, <laughs> or whatever. So you know. They're like, hey, Mr. Tyson, I know you were like LeBron James and Drake. I'm like, no, <laughs> no, I'm not with them every weekend. No, <laughs> I wish I was. I know. You know, but I, it's good that they have that in their heads because beforehand, before I showed them my work, they thought I, I, you know, that I would tell them to shut down the YouTube, but I'm not one to tell them to shut down the dreams. Now, as long as they're not cyberbullying. Yeah, yeah, of course. You know, I have no problem with it. Yeah. You know, because that's the type of person I'm not, I'm not about shutting down people's dreams. I'm not, you know, and for my boys, you know, in this society, you know what I'm saying? You know, why not? You know, if you could monitor it, I mean, that's the best thing I could say to anybody, you know, who's a parent or if you have a young one, that you're, you're in a young one's presence. It doesn't hurt to guide them to things. You know what I'm saying? It's true. As long as you monitor it. Yeah. Now, if you don't, now, if you guide them and don't monitor it, then yeah, it's a problem. Yeah. But if you monitor it, like guide them, show, teach them the differences. It's true. You know, we're we're in a society right now that's so complex and so messed up that, you know, I'm I'm kind of glad that now everybody is recreating their art sense. Yeah, definitely. So with with you being a teacher and like you said, you want to be able to to guide young people. Are you like careful with with the uh, with like? The content, like, you know, if you know, like, a rapper's kind of crazy, he's talking too crazy, is it somebody, like, you know what, I'm not going to interview him because he's, you know, he's a little too over the edge. Like, are you careful with things like that? Um, yay, nay. I mean, as now, as my brand is getting bigger, I'm starting to kind of realize that. 
I think this third season coming out with my TV show. Because I, cause, cause for me, I so much want so much real content. Yeah. That I find a way to separate the two. Okay. It sounds weird, but I do actually find a way to separate the two. Now, if you look at my shows, my shows actually are more or less lessons than actually entertainment and everything else because I want people to understand what these people went through. Mm, okay, makes and, sense. And yeah, granted, if I tell them to censor themselves, then I'm shutting down their energy. Yeah, yeah. And their feelings of what they feel. So I say that to say this. If one is watching my show, I always advise thoroughly watch it before you thoroughly critique it. Makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Because, makes sense. you know what I mean? Because I know, okay, yeah, I am a teacher, but I also know how to separate what I do very well. Yeah. Now, my background, I don't bring into entertainment unless it's an interview or you know that I teach. Yeah. You know, and the same goes with my entertainment career. Yeah. Unless I come out of my mouth and I tell you or I display it some way, then um then thus, you know, that's that's what I display. But no, but you know, that's a great question to ask. And I've always like I said, every year I've always thought, all right, let me simmer this down, let me simmer that down. But in the same token, I mean, I don't wanna devalue or lower my brand. So, you know That's true. Uh and so I, you you, you... You basically you want to create a platform for people to to tell their stories and to people to tell their their realness. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, because that's why I went into media because I felt media was just doing too much, you know, fakeness. Now media is actually starting to do real because they're feeling the mainstream media is starting to feel not slight less slightly threatened, but they're starting to see like, all right, whoa, there's people just coming out with real. So now yeah. they're becoming real. You know, so when an era like you know what's what's winning right now is real was realness and humor. True, because we're in, we're in, we're in some real rough times right now where people are just sick of the sick. It's true. It's <laughs> you, know, true. you know what I'm saying? I mean, I know it sounds crazy. Somebody who's listening is like, "What the hell does he mean? The fuck is <laughs> the sick of the sick?" But no, but things are getting oh, sick out there. It's, it's, it's... Yeah. People are like sick of shit. Look, look at these, look at these idiot NBA finals. People are sick of that shit. People yeah. are sick of, you know. Yeah. Sick of everything is so political. This is political. That's political. Everywhere's political. It's like, dude, shut the fuck up. Just be yeah. human. It's true. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just pull your britches up. Stop <laughs> being a, a cornball. Stop being a fucking lame. Just, just live life. And and with my brand, I mean, that's what we do. Like. Everybody's like, yo, why don't you do an expose? I don't believe in exposés. They're so fucking stupid. Yeah. I don't, I, I really don't. Like, I think expose is just a personal way of, of that media personality just getting their feelings off. It's true. It's true. It, it doesn't benefit. I mean, you, you might get more views, but it's not benefiting nothing. No, nah, it's, it's just dumb. Yeah. It's just dumb. Like, you, like, um, I remember when I left my radio station, there was somebody I wanted, to, wanted me to work with them. That's what they wanted me to do. I'm like, no, that just doesn't fit me. Yeah, that's not that's not my style. And I'm not gonna lie, that that individual, you know, she and it's a female, you know, I'm not gonna say her name. You know, of course, I, mean? yeah. I, I don't. I, I it's, it, it, it's not that I'm afraid. I'm not afraid to say her name. I could say it if I want, but I don't want to give that person the light of day or clout <laughs> to think that you did something because you really fucking didn't. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But um, yeah, you know, she got upset because I wouldn't go by her ways or what she wanted to do. And I told her outright in the email how I felt as as professional as I can. Yeah. And she replied as I as I figured in a non professional manner. And I'm not gonna lie, she was the spark plug of me like really like not doing that expose shit. I'm not doing it. For what? That just doesn't do it. You know, and I'm not saying my stuff is squeaky clean, ha ha ha, but I, it's not it's not exposing the person negatively. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? This person wants to tell a story this way, then fine, cool. They're gonna tell it this way. Yeah. You know, and I just wish it's a not, lot. Like of, you said, it's not your place to tell their story. You just provide a platform, but right, they tell it how they want to tell it. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I just wish a lot of 
us, and I'm going to say us as because I feel we all, doesn't matter, mainstream to independent to hell, fucking the barnyard in, in the back, in the back prairie or yeah. whatever, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it doesn't matter. Like, you, oh, you have a responsibility to your brand. You know what I'm saying? Like, and if you feel you need to be negative and expose, that's stupid. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's like, like, like it's, it's dumb and it, it it's lazy. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Cause it it is an easy way to get a lot of views. If you just expose people, it's, you can get a lot. You can get a lot of views, but like you said, it's lazy and it's not benefiting nothing. It's just it's trash. trash yeah, thing. you know what I'm saying. It just it just it just shows that you just wanna. You just want to go after this dude for no reason, or this individual for no reason. Yeah. Of your personal dis dislike or your personal in in indifference. It's like, dude, be creative. You know what I'm saying? And 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 and, uh, and also too for us, as in black people. You know what I'm saying? I, I hate yeah. to go on a racial route, but I was sick and tired of of the way we displayed. Like people outside of America think we're buffoons. It's true. Like, it's like true. they think they think we just throw drinks on each other and fucking have our pants down and and we just rap and play basketball. Like, no, motherfucker, that's not yeah. what it is. That's true. It's true. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. No, fucker, that's not what it is. Yeah. You know, so it's like you know that's why I got go so hard in what we do in our brand and and even people on our, on my team. I I I express it wholeheartedly. Like, yo, I don't need you here. Yeah. yeah. I want you here. You know yeah. what I mean? Because I know that you're bringing an energy to keep on our positive, you know, display. Yeah, but you if know? you start once they start going towards the negative, you know. Oh yeah, they yeah. out the they out the effing door. They know yeah. I, they know they know I'm not playing. You out the effing door. The minute you start <laughs> wanting to go that route and want to no, you get the fuck out. We're not doing yeah. that here. You feel it makes sense. It makes sense. You know what I'm saying? I just wish that that that's why I just wish people in the industry. To stay their focus on, you know what I'm saying. I'm not tooting my own horn. I'm not saying I'm better. Sorry, so I'm just putting that out there now. So I don't want to nah, get no nah. shit. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> that's because that's how this era is. They nah, of course. what you say. Oh, he thinks he's better than me. No, I don't think I'm better than everybody. It's just I'm that. That's how much passion I have for this culture. Yeah. You know, I really truly respect and love this culture. Yeah. You know. And you mean you're contributing a lot, man. You're putting in a lot of work, man. And I really appreciate your time. Just, you know, you have taken the opportunity to, to come on. Because I know you got a lot. You're wearing a lot of hats right now. Yeah, definitely. No, I mean, you know, um, I, I saw I saw what you were doing. I, and I really followed it. And I looked. And I listened. I, I listened to a couple of episodes. And I was like, yo, this guy's really, you know, is on the same wavelength. And, and also, it's another opportunity for me to really, you know, get me out there and really... You know, have people know that, that's what I was focusing on really this year, 2017. You know, I was really like falling back on that, getting on other people's shows. Okay. You know, whether they were my rival station, not my rival station, you know, who cares? You know, I, I didn't care because, you know, I just, it's just my word and what I'm doing got to be known. Definitely. It makes sense. It makes sense. It makes great sense. So, what's going on with, with the, uh, What's it behind the camera web series? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I'm glad we get into that this part of the interview. So, uh, shout out to Bo Freshman once again. He got me coming out of my acting show. Okay. Out of my acting retirement and uh, getting back into acting. Uh, so pretty much behind the camera, um, Bo wrote a great script about. Uh, the modeling game, the modeling strippers, the vixens, the behind the which is behind the camera, but yeah. behind that that ele um, element of entertainment, and it's so dope how he wrote it. He wrote the whole season. He's writing well. Season two is going to be crazy, but season one is really the foundation to let everybody know about the characters. Uh, my character's name is Kevin. Yeah. Uh, um. He uh, he has a sister named Keisha. You know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. and you know her, him, her, them two. They don't really get along eye to eye, but uh, when he finds out things went wrong, then then Kevin Kevin goes out to play. You know yeah, what I'm saying? But um, defending the sister. Yeah, and a whole lot of other things. I can't let too much out the back. Okay, but, <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, nah. This is definitely another climb, another element of my career. I mean, I, I'm I'm so excited. You know. 
Um, cause even beforehand earlier in my active model career, I felt, st- um, tight casting cause yes. I kept having, kept having me play the thug or I played the thug detective and the thug undercover cop and, the, and I was like, yeah, that's boring. But this character, I definitely dig it. I love it. You yes. know, and we're almost done filming the rest of season one. And now we're just waiting, you know, for the release. So, yeah. We released it in a fall. Uh, it might be. Uh, mid to late September or early October. Um, as far as the platform, probably going to upload it on YouTube. Okay. And um, maybe Manhattan and Network Network if we could get uh, a few other people in. All right. But um, nonetheless, man, we 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 stoked. Seems exciting. Seen, you know, I seen. I think it was like a, a mini trailer. It seems pretty cool. The different yeah, concept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the trailer that I like the best um, is the first one, the one where you see me acting and you see me screaming on top of the roof. Yeah. <laughs> right? You know, you let everybody in the block know, anybody, anybody get it. You know what I'm saying? That's, <laughs> so that's just what Kevin do. Yeah. And, you know, but um, yeah, the second trailer I dropped, that was more uh, in-depth look at what's what's to come for the first season and stuff like that and you know it, can't wait yeah it's definitely it sounds it sounds exciting man and congrats on that again um, yes indeed yeah congrats on all your success congrats on your career i'm excited that that you know you're you're revving things back up with your show and and and, and uh you know di- learning different getting back in different aspects of entertainment industry and it's a good to hear, you know, because I'm just getting into it. It's good to hear someone, you know, who's been through some things and it's still not stopping. So it's, it's encouraging to me. Yes, yes. So I appreciate it. Man. I don't want to keep you all night, but I appreciate your time, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely, 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 man. Yeah, I'm about to, to actually step out a little bit. You know? Okay. Uh, yeah, a little happy hour thing where I'm about to step out real quick for a little bit. Um, but nonetheless, man, I appreciate you, Jay. No Keep problem. doing what you do in this industry. I think you definitely, definitely, definitely are gonna be a staple in this. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm still gonna be motivated to do what I do because guys like you are coming. You know what I'm saying? Guys like <laughs> you are, 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 are arriving. Okay. You know, and other brands are arriving, and that's what keeps me doing what I do. All right. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. Follow me on Instagram. The TV shows Instagram. Is Reem R E E M T V get serious TV, and uh, the personal IG is I am I A M underscore Remo Marac. Definitely follow me, and you know you, you're not going to be uh, you, less entertained. I'll tell you that. <laughs> of course not. Okay. Of course not. Yeah, man. Right. Yeah, definitely, Jay. I appreciate you. Keep doing what you do, man, brother. I appreciate you, man. All right, no problem, King. That's my interview with Remo Morat. I told you it was a lot of fun. I told you he has a lot of energy. I hope you guys got something out of it. Just telling you to, you know, to keep hustling, keep moving, celebrate all your wins. That's what I took away with it. Um, a lot of people, they kind of they go through the process in life and saying, you know, you know, if I'm not at this point, then you know I'm not doing anything. But I think I learned from him just celebrating all your wins. Right, you might get small wins through the process here and there so celebrate every single win you got celebrate it you know sometimes just the fact that i got a podcast i should celebrate it i might not be the top it might not be joe rogan i might not get a million uh listens a week but just celebrate the fact that you're there celebrate the fact that you're in the process celebrate the fact that you you started so every that's what i took away with it and i'm excited about this interview i hope you guys enjoyed it next week is going to be another great episode i'm excited about it thank you guys for continued support also continue to rate and review on itunes continue to send the emails j at average j.com once again j a y at average j a y.com just you know i like your feedback whether it's negative or positive just you know knowing you guys care at all is a lot of fun it's just gives me a little bit of insight on, on where i should take the show also hit me up on all social media i hate average podcasts on instagram 
I hate average J A Y on Twitter. So also I got the uh, Facebook page. I hate average podcast on Facebook. Just search it. You it'll pop up. You can listen to the episodes on Facebook. You can also comment and message me and give me feedback on that. So I'll talk to you guys next week.